Hello Year 11 Triple Science. This is the last lesson in your booklet um, B2.7 Microorganisms and Their Application. The lesson objective today is to understand the factors that affect the growth of the fungus penicillium in an industrial fermenter and how then the antibiotic penicillin is extracted from the surrounding medium. So there's some information on this and the next few slides and we're going to read through it together to look at why we might want to grow lots of a particular microorganism in a fermenter, sometimes called a bioreactor. So uses of microorganisms. We know that the fungus penicillium, that is not a mistake, that's the name of the fungus and its full name is often called Penicillium notatum and if we were to write the species and the genus name it would be Penicillium and then notatum would have that lowercase n so remember we do capital for um, genus and lowercase for species. So it's often grown industrial in a fermenter and the physical conditions in the fermenter are monitored so the things that we kind of like control would be things like temperature pressure, pH, oxygen levels, okay, all of these would be monitored. And these days, they're monitored using um, probes um, that are attached inside the fermenter. So they're monitored and they need to be maintained at an optimum level. So we don't want the temperature getting too high, high pressure. We don't want extremes of pH, too acidic, too alkaline. And um, we want to keep the oxygen levels and the carbon dioxide levels exactly right. In the fermenter, the penicillin, the actual antibiotic, is produced by this fungus Penicillium notatum. And it's then extracted by just filtering it, okay? So leaving behind all the dead bits of the fungal cells and extracting this liquid um, that contains penicillin in it. Certain foods like mycoproteins, okay, um, so things like corn, mints, okay, are produced in exactly the same way using microorganisms. And the production of food from these microorganisms can be controlled and adjusted to meet demand. We know that microorganisms grow very rapidly. They often reproduce particularly bacteria once every 20 minutes. So microbial food products can be produced very quickly and in large amounts. Microorganisms also have a key role to play in decay and they can benefit the environment by returning the nutrients to the soil. So we learned about that back in year 10 when we did the nitrogen cycle. Scientific research has also enabled certain microorganisms to be used in other beneficial ways, so for cleaning up pollution when there have been oil spills, for recycling some plastics and producing biofuels. Okay? We know that microorganisms are even being used to make the foods of tomorrow, so food, uh, corn just being one of them, um, microproteins, there are lots of other ways that they're being used. So what kind of factors influence the growth of this fungus penicillium? Well, because it's a fungus, it's a microorganism, okay? It's the same kind of factors that would influence the growth of bacteria as well. So we know that the antibiotic penicillin is produced by the fungus penicillium. So you do need to know that, make sure you don't mix them up. The fungus is grown in large tanks, they're called fermenters, sometimes called a bioreactor, so you will see that word appear. And various physical conditions are controlled to make sure the fungus has the best possible environment for growth, because the scientists want to maximise the production of um, penicillin. So they would keep the temperature, okay, somewhere between 23 to 28 degrees Celsius. We don't want the temperature too high because that will actually destroy the fungus penicillium. We want to keep the pH at approximately about pH 6.5. And we want to keep the oxygen level, okay, um, fairly high because it's an aerobic fungus, so it needs a good supply of oxygen. Finally, we need to make sure that we provide the penicillium with food. So it's given a culture medium. Basically, it's um, 
uh, whatever the food is, it's normally a, a form of sugar, okay, um, is put into a liquid and it's topped up with nutrients during the production process to make sure that the fungus has plenty to use for respiration. When sufficient penicillin has been produced after about 200 hours, the liquid is then drained from the fermenter, it's filtered to remove the fungal cells and treated chemically to extract the penicillin drug and also to purify it to make sure it's not contaminated with any bacteria or any other chemicals. And they would do this on a regular basis. They would never batch up the um, medicine, the antibiotic, without checking it first each batch. So here's a, an example of a diagram on um, uh, an industrial fermenter. This one's a little bit more complicated than the one in your book because it's got um, the labels on the side. It also tells you exactly what's happening during this. So I'm going to start first of all here. We have the culture medium. So this would be our fungus, our Penicillium natatum. And we need to make sure that within um, here it's getting plenty of food it's getting um, plenty of steam, first of all, to sterilize um, the fermenter and the food before use, okay, but also to provide moisture because moisture is needed as well for fungi and for bacteria, okay, to help them with reproduction. We have a temperature monitor that's going to measure the temperature um, of inside the fermenter and so when it starts to get warm because these fungi carry out um, respiration and respiration releases heat energy so when it starts to get warm the temperature monitor tells the cold water tap okay to let cold water in the cold water surrounds the tank okay and any heat that it takes okay from the heat that's produced from respiration passes out the other side this water jacket okay, is there to actually keep it cool. It's not for insulation to keep it warm, it's insulation to keep it cool. The motor at the top here with the paddles help to keep the culture medium mixed evenly to uh, make sure there's a distribution of food and air. We have um, air is filtered in, okay, and there is a filter to prevent any uh, microorganisms entering with the air, okay, so the oxygen will be bubbled through these tiny little kind of like holes like an air diffuser, I suppose a little bit like some kind of um, jacuzzi jet, okay, coming in here. And when we know that the pH is um, being monitored, and if it gets um, too high or too low, different substances are added, uh, we have an exhaust outlet, carbon dioxide passes out here because that's made in respiration. And then finally, after about 200 hours, this would be drained, this fermenter, and the product would be collected out here. So we know microorganisms have been used for food production for centuries because we've used them in making things like yogurt, cheese, bread, beer and wine. But they've tended to be used to modify other ingredients rather than provide the food directly. In recent years, though, that has changed. So mycoprotein is a protein produced by the fungus um, Fusarium venenatum. I'm just going to shut the door because my husband's on a call too. Apologies. Um, so this is the name of the species that is used to make something like corn, the mycoprotein. OK, corn is a kind of like a brand name. There are plenty of other different versions of this mycoprotein about. It's a flavorless protein. So some people don't particularly like it. Um, it can be made into various different textures. So it can be made as mints. So you can use it to make like a chili or a spaghetti bolognese. OK, it can be um, shaped into sausages, even shaped into bacon rashers. OK, um, and it's supposed to be a substitute for meat. So it's high in protein. It's often marketed, as I said, as the brand name corn. And the fungus is grown in fermenters in a similar way to penicillium. So if you were asked how they make mycoprotein, it's pretty much exactly the same um, sequence of events. But instead of having the penicillium notatum um, fungus, you would have fusarium venenatum. Okay. 
The advantages of um, mycoprotein, it's a very good source of protein for vegetarians, um, or even if you're not vegetarian. Uh, fungus grows more rapidly than crops or livestock, and so the food can be produced quickly. Some people are even arguing that it might actually um, take the place of meat, okay? and it would mean that um, we could be more efficient in our food production. Um, it's quick and easy to boost production if there's an increased demand, so you just like make more of it. And the production is not dependent on factors like climate and soil. So as long as you've got the bioreactor, the container, you can grow it anywhere. Other uses for microorganisms then, um, you don't need to know the names of these bacteria, okay, um, that are used or these fungi, but it's just giving you an example, okay, which they might come up in the exams, okay, they might give you the information there. So this one, I'm going to have a go at pronouncing the name of this bacterium, a dehachlacocoides ethanogenes, okay? Um, so we can see the capital letter for genus and the lowercase for species is used to clean up toxic waste. So basically it turns the toxic chemicals into a substance that's much less toxic can it, so it can be removed from the environment. Recycling um, plastics actually uses the um, genus of Pseudomonas bacteria that can basically break down non-biodegradable plastics into biodegradable forms much quicker than they do normally. Other bacteria can form a, a type of bioplastic that is biodegradable. And so these can be grown industrial and plastic could be produced on demand then. Biofuels are fuels produced from living materials. So we often think of biofuels as being things like wood, willow and um, chippings. OK, but fungi are also used to ferment sugars to make things like ethanol and um, ethanol is alcohol. And in um, Brazil in particular, they're very good at getting their cars. OK, the car engines are designed to run on ethanol from the fermented um, sugar cane that they grow there. And so some bacteria can produce forms of biofuel directly. So that's something that everybody is really looking into at the moment as we move away from petrol powered vehicles. So you've got this diagram, OK, on um, the presentation here. And it just shows you some labels. It's not exactly the same as the one on page 29. I will show you the picture of that one in a second. But you could use this diagram to help you see if you can label it. And to give you a little bit of help, OK, you've got the fermented components in the table on the right hand side of the diagram. So this comes straight off a of BBC Bite Size and I will put the link for that on um, to Moodle as well. So you've got that as a reference point, as a revision. So anything you're not quite sure of, you'll be able to understand from there. So it's used to grow either bacteria or fungi. Um, what they mean by transgenic bacteria is bacteria that have been altered, that have had a gene added to them. So, for example, this type of industrial fermenter would be used to grow insulin that has been genetically engineered. So back in um, the double award topic, okay, when we were looking at cloning, um, insulin genes were cloned by being put into the plasmid of um, the bacteria Escherichia coli. Um, so that's what we call a transgenic bacteria that's been altered to contain a gene for of something that we want to grow. So insulin, obviously, we want to grow so that we can use it to treat diabetics. So we can actually grow human insulin as opposed to having to use the pig insulin that we used to use. We can also use it for making penicillin, the antibiotic from the mold penicillium. We can also use it for making mycoprotein, OK, or corn, a fungus based meat um, substitute by using the fungus or mold fusarium, OK? So they might give you its full genus and species name. So just have a little look at the diagram and see if you can use that to start thinking about the labels that will go on to page 29. Pause the video if you need to. So each feature of the fermenter has a particular function. There is a very good reason why they have been designed in this way. They're usually made from a metal that will not corrode. So it could be um, stainless steel or even copper. It would be quite an expensive fermenter if it was made of copper. But um, nevertheless, that would do the same job. They may hold thousands of litres. 
And this table here on this slide, okay, shows you the main features that you need to know about and um, why those features are on the bioreactor or fermenter um, and their function and their reason, okay? So the steam inlet, inlet meaning the steam coming in, sterilizes the inside of the fermenter and also provides moisture for the fungus to grow. We want an aseptic container to begin with because we don't want any unwanted microorganisms growing in there, okay? Because it would be ideal conditions, moist, fairly warm, okay? There'd be plenty of food and plenty of oxygen. The nutrient inlet allows sterile nutrients like sugars okay, to enter the fermenter so the penicillium um, mould can actually use those to grow and reproduce for respiration. The water jacket with the cooling water keeps the temperature inside constant and we know that penicillium um, fungi grow best at an optimum temperature of between 23 to 28. The air inlet um, provides oxygen into the fermenter um, because they need oxygen for aerobic respiration. So if you're asked what kind of respiration is happening in the fermenter, generally it is aerobic. There will be occasions where if they're not getting enough um, oxygen or if the carbon dioxide level is building up, some of these penicillin might um, start respiring anaerobically and they might start making a different product then. The filter on the air inlet prevents microorganisms getting inside the fermenter, so it's an aseptic um, precaution. The stirring, map, uh, stirring paddles keep the mixture inside the fermenter agitated. Agitated means stirred, okay? Um, and it mixes them to keep the temperature even. The pH probe and intake valve for acid and alkali checks that it's at its optimum value and we know that that should be a pH of 6.5. So that is just a very, very weak acid. So remember, 7 would be neutral, 1 would be your strong acid. So 6.5, a weak acid. Okay. Once the penicillin has been fermented for around about 200 hours, um, the liquid then is drained off normally from the bottom of the fermenter and it needs to be filtered because this is going to have all the dead fungal cells, okay, and will hopefully leave our product, our penicillin, um, which will need to be treated chemically and need to be purified before it can actually be um, packaged and used as an antibiotic. So this is your diagram here, okay? I want you to add the correct labels to your diagram for me, please, okay? And can you write, using the information so you can rewind the video if you need to, the role of each of these different components that are on here. Now, I have actually changed some of the names on mine. Um, in your booklet, it's got air supply, um, it's air inlet or supply would be equally fine. Stirring paddles or paddle stirrers, pH probe, water jacket is fine. Gas inlet, outlet, sorry, is the steam inlet. Um, and then we've got microbe input, nutrient inlet, and filter on the air inlet. Okay, so they, they've called it product outlet. So you see if you can um, label that up for me, please. Pause the video. Now, the very last task I want you to do is um, what would be the equivalent of a QWC question. I want you to describe in detail how penicillin is made from the fungus penicillium. And in actual fact, I can see a mistake because that should be a capital P, okay, for the genus there. So, using the information from the video, okay, and from the slides, okay, go back have a little read and jot down what you think would be the main points, okay, that they would be looking for. Pause the video and have a go. So I would be looking for the following things. They may not necessarily be in this sequence, but they should be um, here. So we've got First, the mould penicillium natatum would be added to the fermenter as a liquid. We call that the culture medium. Nutrients are added for the penicillium to start to divide and grow asexually. Steam is added to provide moisture for fungal growth and also to clean the inside of the container. Air is pumped in to provide oxygen for the fungus to carry out respiration and grow. 
Mixture is stirred by the paddles to mix the nutrients, oxygen and fungal cells. As the penicillium grows, it releases heat energy by respiration and produces the active substance penicillin. This is the antibiotic. However, this heat energy could slow down its growth and destroy the fungus. So the container needs keeping at a constant temperature. And this is why we have our cooling water. It comes into the water jacket surrounding the fermenter to keep the fermenter at a constant temperature and the warmer water leaves the jacket. Due to respiration, the waste gas carbon dioxide leaves the fermenter, otherwise it would cause an increase in pressure and it also would be toxic to the growing fungus and kill it. And the liquid that's collected via the outlet after approximately 200 hours would be filtered to remove the fungal cells and leave behind the liquid penicillin, the antibiotic that is then purified. So have a little check. Obviously, there's more than six marks here. There's nine marks, okay? So for um, a six mark um, QWC, I would be expecting you to get all of these and obviously capital letters, full stops, okay? Correct punctuation and spelling. If you are missing, say, one or two, that might drop you down to five marks. If you're missing three or four, that would drop you down to four marks. If you're missing... Um, uh, five marks, I would drop it down to three. Uh, if you're missing six marks, down to two, okay? And if you've got only a very basic um, description of how it's made, perhaps you might pick up one mark, okay? So that is the end of this booklet. After half term, we're going to be doing some um, research on some various different diseases and conditions, okay, um, that will make up the very last booklet. But in double award, you will be starting on um, B2.5, which is all about um, response and regulation, so the nervous system and hormones. Have a very good half term all. Make sure your booklet is up to date for me, please. And hopefully we may get to see you soon.